Hi everyone and welcome to Triple M Adventures with Bill. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel and possibly becoming a Patreon. This video is a review of the Torquit RC M8S charger. Now, Torquit RC kindly sent me for review all the products you can see, I think you can see them over there, the boxes. So what I did, I just asked my Patreons which one they would like me to review first and the M8S was chosen uh, to be tested first. So what we'll do, we'll go um, to the overhead camera so that we can have a look and I'll go through all the features of this uh, particular charger. Then I did a charge test and a discharge test and we'll look at those and then I'll come back at the end of the uh, test and give you my overview of this charger. Now let's take a closer look at the Toolkit RC M8S multifunctional charger. Now on the side we've got a USB port, we've got which looks like a PPM slot for the servo testing. On this side we've got our output for our charging and we can charge 8S from 2 to 8S on this. At the back we've got where we connect our input power and we've got the two fans. Now let's take a look at the screen. You can see we've got a scroll wheel, so we can pick which option we want. We can then click, it's okay, and then we can exit. So let's take a look at the charger section first by clicking okay. Now I've already done the charge and storage test, and then I reset the charger so that I could go through the process of setting up the different types of batteries. Now you've got three you can set up. So if we go back to setting up this battery and we would then scroll down, uh, push enter, sorry, and then come up. So it is a LiPo, it is 4.2, auto cells is fine. Now we've got to set this up at 1C charge rate. So for a 1,500 milliamp hour battery, we will dial that down to there. There we go and do the same for the discharge, which we click and then we just change that to... 1.5 and there we go and then we go down we can say uh, select charge discharge or storage uh, let's go on to the so if we push exit we'll go back and we go on to new so let's set up another battery that i regularly charge so you push enter so this one is going to be it's a, a 450 milliamp hour battery so we're going to dial this down to 0.4 there we go and the same here, dial that down to point four. There we go. So we've now set up the two most popular batteries that I actually use. So, but we can, it's easy to change. We can, you can always quickly go in here and change the uh, charge current. Um, it would, probably would have been nicer to have more options on here so that you don't accidentally uh, you know, charge the battery at the wrong C rating. But I mean, that's not, you just must be cautious every time you charge your batteries anyway and check what you're doing. So that's, that's the charging side of it. If we push exit, we come back out again. Before we move on to the measure window, let me go back into charge. I want to go to the third battery and show you the battery types. There are six of them. I'm just going to go through them. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six types that you can charge with this charger. Okay, we're going to exit and we're going to go into measure now. So if I click enter and now I'm going to, this adapter does not come with the charger. I made this one up myself so I can do XT60 to 30. So let's plug this in. Now I'm going to plug in my little 2S battery first. Okay, okay, there we go. And we push OK. Now we can see the voltage there. We've got our voltage coming up and we can balance this battery by clicking voltage. Going down you can see we can test or we can do balancing. Let's just balance. Click balance, so it's balancing now, which we, we don't need to do, but that's an option we've got. We can push exit and we can go back up to the top. We can click vol 
two to change that to internal resistance push enter and then scroll down push enter again and it will test and you can see this battery is is the internal resistance is quite high but that's the test you can do on your battery let's come back out again now this option here in measure the S bus is quite cool because if we say OK, what we can do is this is a Radio Master R161 receiver. It's an S bus mode. Now we can plug it into the side. You can see it's uh, negative, positive and signal. So signal is yellow. So if I plug this in to here and hopefully you can see that and it's bound to my TX16S. And there you go, we can test the channels. Absolutely cool, look at that. And what's really cool, I used the M8S to actually bind it, the receiver to my radio, my TX16S, by holding the button down and then plugging it in. So that's really cool for if you want to bind your receiver before you even install it into your model. And it works a treat. And as you can see, there we go, there's channel two, channel four, channel three, and channel one. So that's quite excellent. Now that we've used the S bus, we can also do a PWM and PPM receiver. And also we can check an ESC. So in other words, this is, would be a watt meter. Now we've finished in the measure window. Let's go into the next window, which is outputs. And here we can use our M8S as a power supply. So if we click enter and we can pick 12 volts and we can, we can choose the voltage and the amps. So we can use this to power up devices. So if we wanted to power up our quadcopter um, so that we can plug it into beta flight, we wouldn't need to use a battery. We could use this. So that's quite, quite cool. Then we've got outputs, the PWM, PPM and S bus. But I'm going to demonstrate the PWM, which we can use a servo for. So let me plug a servo in. There we go. Put it into shot so that you can see it. So we can go enter and we can manually set it that will mean going down to here and changing the value but let's demonstrate it in auto mode so you can see there's one speed two speed and then at the third speed so that's how we can use it to test our servos so that now completes the outputs window now let's move on to the settings there's quite a few options in here we can change. We've got the lowest input voltage, then the input power of 450 watts, and the safe temperature and the safe timer, discharge mode. Now this is interesting. At the moment it's set on internal. So the charger will dissipate the heat from the uh, battery being discharged. But if we click enter and change it to recycle, now what will happen, when we put this battery into here and another battery is plugged into the um, input, so the energy from this battery will go into this battery. because so that's quite a nice idea. If you had a really big uh, re reserved battery that you use for charging when you're out in the field, you could put the energy back into that battery. I don't know how efficient that will be, but it's definitely more efficient than just wasting the energy by dissipating it in heat. So that's quite a nice function. Um, let me change this back. Okay, and then we go on to window two. We've got the, the idle beep speed, the S, S bus value, backlights, buzzers, all the normal things. Work completed, and it says end. And then we've got the knob. Obviously, you can change the speed of this, the color scheme, what language, and default. So that's all the options of the M8S. So there we go. And here is the Torquid RC M8S charger charging my four cell battery. I'm going to use exactly the same battery for all the tests of the different charges that I do. And you can hear the fan. It's not too irritating, I must say. And you can see it's nearly finished charging. Um, it's showing us the cell one to four and it's nearly completed. It's given us all the data on the screen. Uh, which is uh, excellent and you can also obviously switch over if I turn the wheel We can go to the internal resistance and you can see that So I'm going to put all the data I was retrieved from the, the 
charges as I use them and put them into a chart. I want to do uh, a sound level test, but the DB meter that I've ordered hasn't arrived yet, so I will have to do that a bit later. But this isn't irritating, in my opinion. The charger that I already use, with the two that I already have, they are actually a lot louder than these. And as you can see, the charge cycle is completed now. So we're going to click OK. And you can see it did it in 37 and a half minutes. You can now see the voltage is showing exactly at 4.2 for all of them. And the it's now given me the internal resistances at the end of charging. Now let's put this battery back into storage. So we're going to click enter. And then we're going to go to the second battery I set up. So it's uh, end voltage, is, it says 4.2, auto cells 1.5. So that's 1C rating for this. But we're going to go to storage and click OK. Okay, it's, then it, it's, it's telling us what it's going to put it into each cell at 3.85. That's fine. And then we push OK. At about 45 seconds, the fan started up, which is probably around the same noise as when it was charging. At about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, the fan went into high speed, which is a lot louder than when it's charging. Okay, you, you can hear it, it slowed down then. So it is a bit louder then than it is when it's actually charging. But that's only to be expected when it's dissipating the heat from the battery, yeah, the uh, voltage from the battery, which is it's converting to heat. Now, I've just put my hand at the back where the fan is and it's the charger doesn't seem to be getting that warm, even though it's doing quite a hard job of um, discharging the battery. So the, the charger isn't that warm. Now, after just over 31 minutes, we are down to 3.85, 3.86, 3.88 and 3.86. So let's see how long it takes to finish the storage cycle. And there we go, the process is finished. It hasn't actually told me it's finished, but I can see the time has stopped at 35 minutes and 28 seconds. So it's completed the job and you can see the, oh, there we go, the fan's got off. It's completed the job. So it doesn't come up and actually say it's done. But there we go, 3.86, 3.86, 3.86 and 3.85. So it's successfully discharged that battery in 35 minutes and 28 seconds. Now finally to my summary of the Toolkit RC M8S charger. This charger can charge 1 to 8S batteries, but you can only do one at a time. So you could use this uh, charger in the field if you wanted to. You could definitely, I'm sure you could plug it into a car battery and charge at the field with it. Uh, it is very compact and small. Uh, so that is a, you know, you're buying the, the charger, you know it's only going to do one uh, battery at a time. But you're going to get a bigger one, you know, to do four, four batteries at a time, you're going to have to buy a different uh, charger to this. Uh, but that shouldn't, in my opinion, sway you from not buying this because it's got a lot of advantages. And one of them is that you can test your receivers, your PPM ones, the SBUS ones. And that's a, that's a great feature to be able to do that and just plug the receiver into here, turn your radio on, and then also be able to use this to bind your receiver. So that's an advantage of this multi-purpose charger. It also has another great feature, and that's the power supply system, where you can um, plug your power supply into it and then bring out of the charger what voltage and what amps you require, which is a brilliant feature to have so that you can power up your quads. So I will probably keep this on my this particular charger on my d desk that I use when I'm doing filming so that I can use it as a, a as a power supply in that way. The servo tester now I've already got a small servo tester so would I take this uh, charger and then test a servo with it? I've, I've got to say I probably wouldn't because I'd go and grab my small one and quickly check them but if you don't have a servo checker already, you're going to get one included with this. So that's a bonus. Now getting on to the important bit, would I buy this charger with my own money? Well, 
I want to give you all the information I can about a product. And if I find something that I really don't like, I am going to definitely tell you I don't like it. There was nothing really with this charger I, I didn't like. Um, so, but I want to give you the information and show you as much detail in my videos so that you can make an um, educated decision on whether this is the charger for you and whether you are going to buy it. Now, at the end of my product reviews, I always say, would I buy it? And I would. I would buy this uh, charger because I think it is a, it's a good charger. It's got some nice features um, and it worked really well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Bye for now. There is an affiliate link in the description below if you would like to purchase the product I just reviewed, which would help support my channel.